Hello, friends. Welcome to the Cold War Prepper. This is Lee, and tonight we're going to be talking about uh, When Crisis Hits Suburbia uh, by Ted Riley. So it's a modern-day prepping guide to effectively bug in and protect your family home in a societal collapse. <coughs> so let's talk about that real quick. Gosh, the banks are failing left and right. Hello, little lone prepper. Hello, Holly. Uh, banks are failing left and right, and it looks it does not look bad, good at all. Let me take a look at the stock futures here real quick um, and see what we've got there. So right now, we were down about 1% in the stock market uh, at close today. And right now, it looks like, come on, come on, come on, give me that green or red either one will be fine uh it's not going to so because i'm live so the computer oh it looks like it's going to be picking up tomorrow morning so right now it's gaining 39 points so it's going to gain back about one tenth of what it lost uh, earlier today so um you know that's kind of uh stock market's not looking good the the financial markets aren't looking good gregory manorino who i follow uh, is not very optimistic about the market at all. And uh, so, yeah, so the market's not looking good. And, and uh, real estate's slowing down. I mean, everything is just kind of taking its place. So it looks like um, some sort of societal co collapse may be happening here in the near future. I saw that uh, the president is authorizing, what was it, uh, 1500 uh, U.S. troops to the border. I don't know what they're going to do at the border. Um, you know, uh, stand there and push people back. I, I I don't know what troops are going to do at the border. They can't shoot. Uh, you know, are they just going to process the new voters for the president uh, in in a fast, faster manner? Who knows? But uh, I think it's a, I think it's a, a re-election ploy. The same thing with what has happened in Anwar. They've opened up what 500 acres of, of oil land to be uh, drilled on in, in in Alaska. Crazy stuff going on. But anyhow, uh, just all kinds of crazy stuff. Paragraphs one and two of uh, when crisis hits suburbia. So uh, let's get into that. Um, he's got a couple of really good quotes here that I really, really like. Um, let me see if I, I got them highlighted. So one is by Carl Sagan, and it says, extinction is the rule, survival is the exception. And so hopefully we will be uh, among the survivors and not among those who go uh, extinct. So uh, when it comes to bug out, there are some very simple triggers you can easily remember using the acronym REDOUT. R-E-D-O-U-T. So R stands for resources, E, environment, D, destination, O, overwhelming force, U, unpreparedness, and T, threat increases. Um, so just remember that, you know, you, you, you're never going to have as many resources where you're going as what you have where you are. Uh, you just simply can't carry them. And hi, Pat. And uh, so one of the things, you know, like my bug out bag, um, I have it on a dolly, on a two wheel dolly, because I'm at the age now to where I just can't carry, a, you know, a 40 pound pack uh, with the ease that I did, say, 40 years ago or even 30 years ago. Uh, so I, I have it on a two wheel dolly in case we have to go somewhere. And, and same with my wife. So we have two two wheel dollies and that's what we're going to do. We're just going to carry our we're going to put our, our, our backpacks or our. Uh, bungee corded to the um, uh, two wheel dollies, and that's how we'll we'll, we'll carry them if necessary. Um, so, Holly, what what is? Uh, I don't know the numbers, and they call those OTMs other than Mexicans. And there was a bus load, which was about thirty some odd. Uh, military age, Chinese, very well dressed. Their shoes weren't dirty. So obviously they had been bused to the border. Uh, so my suspicion is that they're operatives. Uh, they came without children. They're all military age. And of course they were allowed across. They processed them and then they were released inside the country. Uh, my personal opinion, and, and uh, Triple G Farms and I had this discussion uh, a couple 
Mondays ago, um, probably in the middle of April. Uh, and, and the two Chinese colonels wrote the book Unrestricted Warfare, and that's exactly what I think is going on, is we're going to have a whole bunch of little bitty things uh, that you can't put together, uh, and that's their entire battle plan, is they're going to do little things, you know, uh, train derailments, uh, 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 lot, feedlot fires and, and dairy explosions that are just weird. You, you can't prove who it is, but you have your suspicions, but there's just no dots. Kind of like what uh, Samuel Alito said, Justice Alito said. He says he knows who the leaker is of the Dodds decision, uh, but he just doesn't have enough proof to, to, to say the name. So, you know, that's kind of where we are with uh, the Chinese meddling in our internal affairs. I just ordered a book and I got notification from Amazon. It'll be here Sunday. But General Flynn, now General Flynn was a lieutenant colonel when he and I worked together um, at uh, Fort Huachuca. Yeah, he's a good guy. Uh, I, I really respect him. And uh, But anyhow, he uh, uh, he wrote a book on fifth-generation warfare, and I've ordered it. And, and so it should be here hopefully by Sunday. Uh, Amazon said that it's going to be delayed, and it'll be here Sunday. But we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more when it gets here. Uh, the second one is environment. Um, you know, unless you've got, like the book says, a nuclear meltdown, and you're possibly going to be in the in the radioactive fallout area, unless it is a wildfire coming through, uh, a, a hurricane or a tornado or an earthquake that has devastated uh, your, your abode, there is absolutely no need to evacuate, okay? <clears throat> Even with some of the demics, uh, epidemics and pandemics and everything else, you're probably far better off staying inside your home than you are getting outside and mixing with other people. Uh, destination. So the question becomes one of, you know, everybody says I have a bug out destination. Well, what if that bug out destination is exactly where the threat is coming from? What if, you know, so I've, I've got, I, I want to, I've got a uh, uh, plan to occupy. Um, oh, I know. I, I've got a good one. Um, underground caverns on I-35 in, in uh, Williamson County. Uh, they, they were they were doing drilling for I-35 and, and they lost their drill bit when they got down to, you know, they were trying to test the earth, make sure it could support all the weight of the of the, uh, uh, free, uh, the freeway. And they lost their drill bit, which meant there was a cavern down there. So they went down, they found the Balcones fault line. So there's all these caverns and caves down along the Balcones fault line. So let's say that I plan that as my bug out location. It's got a stream running through it. It's underground. Yeah, I mean, it's got everything in, that a person would want to protect them from nuclear fallout. But what if it's been destroyed? What if it, that, that nuclear explosion is causing uh, turmoil with the Earth's crust and what, you know, all kinds of what ifs. So, or what if the radiation is between me and that bug out location? So, you know, a lot of times you have to take into consideration where do you have a destination for each eventuality? I told you that every morning when I get up, I check windy.com to see where the prevailing winds are coming from. And so this morning uh, when I got up, the prevailing winds were coming from Houston into my area. So, you know, San Antonio would be fine. You can do whatever you want to with San Antonio. Uh, that's going to, you know, the, that'll go away from me, but Houston, I, I have to worry. Now, Houston area also has a nuclear power plant. So if something happened to it, now I have to worry. So when you start thinking about destination, think of, think of you know, at least four different directions, north, south, east, and west. And if possible, think of at least eight different directions that you want to go to so that you have an alternative that you can always go to it in different directions. Hello, Calamity Jane. And... Um, then overwhelming force. Uh, so there are time uh, when you, uh, you know, there's, whether it be bad guys, uh, gangs, cartels, uh, insurgents, our military, martial law, whatever, there are times you just don't want to take on the bad guys. And you're going to have to just do a strategic retreat. So, you know, understand and get enough intelligence to where you can back up and run away or whatever. 
Uh, and then thread increases uh, for the T. I'm sorry, uh, we need to go to unpreparedness. Uh, you could encounter a threat you haven't even considered or prepared for. <laughs> I am totally unprepared for alien invasion, alien being extraterrestrial. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, I was totally unprepared, to be honest with you, originally for the lockdown in 2020. I lucked out. I, I really lucked out. Uh, I had a store at the time. And I had a, I had set up and I was selling Thrive Life foods at the Belton County uh, Survival Expo um, or Bell County Survival Expo in Belton, Texas. And this guy came up and he says, hey, do you have any any interest in selling pandemic bags? And this guy had bought like five um pallets of, 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 of flu pandemic bags. And they had uh, a bottle of alcohol, hand sanitizer, a set of gloves, and, and in, two N95 masks. Let me see, gloves, masks, hand sanitizer. Um, I forget what else in there. But, you know, he said, I'll sell these to you at, at $1,000 a case. I thought, whoa. And so I said, okay, I'll take two cases. And my wife just about killed me. And uh, I said, well, you know, you know, we've got this thing going on in China. We don't know what's going to happen with it. And so sure enough, within the first two weeks after the lockdown, I sold everything I had. I called them back and the price went up to $12.50 a case. So I bought two more cases and then those sold out real quick. And I bought two more cases. Now the price was up to $1,500. So I finally finished off that pallet and I paid $2,000 a case for these things. And and I never marked the price up. I sold them at the same price the whole way. So those last couple, when it was uh, you know seventeen fifty and two thousand dollars a case, I was making maybe five dollars on, on. No, I wasn't even making that much. I was making maybe a dollar on a twenty dollars sale. So it, it was crazy. But uh, you know, you, you're, you you never know what's going to happen. You, you can kind of try to read the tea leaves. You can kind of try to be prepared, but you never really know. Uh, Okay, so Dragon Slayer says Houston also has a freight rail that carries all kinds of hazmat crap up in Kingwood, including nuclear. Yes, that's true. Uh, so a lot of the hazardous material stuff, especially petrochemicals, um, coming down, or coming up from the uh, uh, manufacturers along um, the east side of, of southeast side of Houston, you know, um, South Houston and those areas. Uh, Ingleside, or what is it? Um, seaside? No, Seaside's in California. I, I forget. There's a whole bunch of little bitty towns down there, and that's where all the petrochemical places are. Hi, David. Welcome back. And uh, so, as a matter of fact, we when I worked for the uh, Texas Air Control Board, we did air pollution monitoring, and I was the HR director for the southeastern area, Region 7, <clears throat> which was like the number one pollution source in Texas, and that was all in the uh, let's call it the Houston metropolitan area uh, and greater greater Houston area. And there were places, we, there was one elementary school that was closed down because they found out that there was illegal toxic waste dumping had been, they drilled a hole and poured illegal toxic waste down in this hole and they capped it over and then sold the land to the local school board. And they built this, uh, elementary school on top of it. And there was this toxic waste that was just seeping up. And, and so they had to close the school. But yeah, there's all kinds of strange stuff that goes on down in that area, all kinds of strange uh, things in the air, soil, water, everything else. It, it, it's totally crazy. <clears throat> okay. And then, of course, the last one is threat increases. While you might be managing your bug in just fine, <clears throat> the threat outside your home could increase to the point to where it's no longer safe. So, uh, you know, of course, if you've got a group of people that you're working with, you know, that's going to be fantastic. So then it says, <clears throat> what do you want to have in your bug out bag? I can, <clears throat> at some point, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll do a, uh, a layout of my bug out bag. And uh, I don't know if anybody would be interested in that, but, you know, uh, the bug out bag I have now is a modified Echo Sigma bag. I think I told you all I had a bag. I started building my bag in 1980 and I refined it. You know, people say don't buy pre-made bags because you're going to substitute a whole bunch of stuff. 
I don't think maybe maybe three or four things other than the bag itself um, from what I had in 1980 was what got stolen out of my car in 2015. So I had that same bag for 35 years and I was constantly upgrading, changing, moving things in, taking things out, uh, you know, modifying it. And, and uh, gosh, I've got so many knives. It's pitiful. I, I, I would become enamored with a new um, fixed blade knife. Try it. You know, I've got, I've got five or six brand new, never been used uh, fixed blade knives that were on my bug out bag that I thought were going to be cool. And then I just thought something else was even more cool. And, you know, but that's just the way it is. You, you constantly change things out. So even if you buy a pre-made, you're going to do the same thing. So my bug out bag and my wife's bug out bag are right now are both based off of Echo Sigma pre-made bags. And then of course we've, we uh, took all the, the wrapping off and everything else. And then we've upgraded those with uh, some of the other things that we want that we personally believe in. Uh, so what are some of the things that you want to have with you? Number one, water pump water filters. So get yourself a good water filtration system. I'm going to recommend, I like the Survival Filter Pro. I also like some of the Sawyer systems. Uh, I don't like anything that is in a straw form uh, because if it is terrible water, I don't want to have to have a straw where I have to get my face down close to that water in order to suck it up into into the uh, in, to, to drink it. I would rather keep a little bit distance away from that. So I like like the Survival Filter Pro, uh, and I have two of those as a matter of fact, one for each bag. A little bit on the heavy side, but I think it's going to be far better. I also have uh, and, and gosh, I was stupid when I did it. But I bought the nuclear irradiation filters for my Seychelles water bottles. I got one for Helen's bag, one for mine. Then I started thinking about it. You know, if, I'm, if I pick up water uh, that has radio con radiological contaminants in it and I'm drinking that water and it's filtering out all of the radioactive elements or, or the, the, the fallout, then that's going to be captured in that filter. So what am I going to do with that bottle? I'm going to take that bottle, fill it up with more radioactive water and hang it on my belt and carry it around. Now I've got a concentration of radioactive water that I'm carrying around all the time. Not a good idea. I don't think I want to do that. So, so that was a poorly thought out decision. I, I, I wish I hadn't spent the money on the radioactive filters that I did, but you know, oh, you're allowed to make a couple of mistakes over the course of your prepping um, uh, journey. Uh, let me see if I'm missing anything here in the, in the, uh, uh, so, so Dragon Slayer kind of agrees, needs a, dra a motor and wheels. I've got too much to carry for all three of us. Uh, my daughter, I talked, when I was talking to her about my bug out bag being too much, when I was explaining to her that I wanted, uh, that I was going to take two five gallon jugs. This is before I got my water catchment system, my rain catchment system. I was going to take two five gallon jugs in, in, a, in a buggy and go down to the river, which is about a mile from here. And then it's down about 250, 300 feet in elevation. And then pull that back up the, uh, you know, the incline uh, to get back up to the house. And uh, so she bought me one of those heavy duty uh, garden um, uh, wagons from, uh, from, uh, Academy, Academy sports. You can also get the same thing at, at Mass Pro Shop. <clears throat> They're about a hundred bucks. And so she gave that to me for Christmas one year. <clears throat> so now, um, you know, it's just going to be used for hauling heavy stuff around the house or around the neighborhood. Uh, yeah. And unfortunately, I, like I said, mine's so heavy that I have to have it on a two wheel dolly. So, uh, so, so, you know, I, I kind of, I'm one of those guys here, here's something that I haven't figured out yet. Maybe you, you all are, can help me with this one. If two is one and one is none, does that mean you need three? I don't know. Uh, hello, Scott. Welcome. Good to see you. Uh, yeah. So, so Holly Dragon Slayer, uh, I think I think the solution is unless it's absolutely called for, we're going to have to hunker down. And, and and you know my plan is to hunker down. My next door neighbor is with me. Uh, she's a hunker down as well. We're kind of working together. And then I've got another neighbor over here. Uh, he's a single father with two children. 
He's in the same boat. He's going to hunker down. He realizes he can't be a lone wolf and survive this, uh, especially with two young children, you know, that, that we've got to kind of do things together. Scott across the street, I think he's going to be in, in with this as well. He hasn't committed, but, you know, he, he sure is showing a lot of good interest. So, you know, we, we've got some things taken care of. Um, there, now, now, gray wolf uh, prepping, I, I forget, what does he call him? I think it's gray wolf prepping. Uh, a buddy of mine, he and I taught at Fort Huachuca together. Taught, he, he taught, uh, he was a counterintelligence guy. I was a signals intelligence guy. Uh, we both were warrant officers. And he has a channel, just a, not a channel. He just does straight uh, URLs, just a straight website. But he ha is a minimal, minimalist um, bug out bag. And I think his bug out bag only weighs 27 pounds total, everything in it. And so, uh, but he's the one that... Uh, also turned me on to Mount Hagen um, freeze-dried coffee, instant coffee. It's probably one of the better tasting instant coffees you're going to find. Um, that is absolutely true, Diana, too. That, so, you know, th that's like kind of like the, the, what was that movie or that TV show where they left them on an island and they could take seven things with them. Uh, so you, you had to choose which seven things. And that's kind of that whole idea that, you know, some of the things you can't forge, like a knife, a pot, you know, those are the kinds of things you want to take with you. And if you have enough bushcraft skills, if you have enough knowledge, if, if you can survive, then you should be able to survive with very few items, uh, become an actual MacGyver, you know, in, in a survival situation. Uh, so that is very, very true. Uh, the more you know, but uh, there's also convenience. Okay. So, so the question you have to ask yourself is, and the question we always ask in the army uh, when we're when we're carrying a uh, a load, is is this worth the weight? You know, am I going to get the benefit uh, out of having this product as the weight that I have to have in order to the discomfort I have to have to carry it? Hello, to hello, tofu. Um, so there's 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 two different kinds of bug out bags. Okay. Uh, and, and so we had one in Germany and, and Helen knew I was a prepper when we got married in 1984 and, uh, she didn't say anything about it, you know, although, uh, when we got to Germany, one of the first things she had to do was she had to put out, she had to build what they called the Neo bag, which was a non-combatant evacuation order. <clears throat> so all of the family members of the military who were stationed in West Germany during the cold war. Uh, had to have a, an evacuation bag or a bug out bag <clears throat> with all their medical records and medicals and, and medicine and, and important papers and their passport and you know, all this other kinds of stuff, a three day set of food and clothing. And so that if we got a call saying that, you know, it was time to bug out, the families would then be bused to the airport and flown back to the U.S. They try to get the families out before the before the commies and the war and everything came across the border. So that was her introduction to a, to a bug out bag. They called it a NEO bag, NEO, non-combatant evacuation orders. <clears throat> so, so she's been kind of living with NEO bags and bug out bags now since 1984. Um, so anyhow, th th there's, there's, you've got the NEO bag, which is bare essentials, really. Then you got the bug out bag, which most people have. That's going to be your, probably about a three-day bag. A lot of people think they're going to go out into the woods and be bushcrafty with a, with a bug out bag. Not true. Uh, bug out bag is primarily to get you to some sort of government assistance, some sort of an evacuation center or something where they're going to have additional uh, capability to take care of you. The one that's going to get, you're going to carry out into the forest and uh, and then you're going to try to survive in the forest and a bushcrafty type of an experience is called an inch bag, I-N-C-H. And that stands for I'm never coming home. So that's going to be a humongous bag. And they, those are the ones you see the pictures of that, you know, the guy, the, the bag is three stories tall and the poor guy's hunched over trying to carry it. That's the inch bag. <clears throat> there is a fantastic pre-stock, pre-made inch bag that's put out by Eberly Stock, E-B-E-R-L-E-S-T-O-C-K. I love their bag because it also has a scabbard for a long right, a long barrel rifle, a hunting, good hunting rifle, bolt action rifle. I guess you could use it for a shorter rifle or a shotgun. 
<clears throat> but it comes pre-stocked. I mean, it even has, um, um, what are they called? Yo-yo fishing reels. So yo-yo fishing reel, you, you set it in the water and it's spring loaded. So when a fish nibbles on it, it, that spring activates and then it zings up and it pulls the fish up out of the water. So it's got three of those in it. I mean, it is extremely well thought out. And it's Everly Stock, E-B-E-R-L-E-S-T-O-C-K, fully loaded uh, bug out bag, or I'm never coming home bag. Uh, yeah, we're trying to get David over 900 uh, subscribers. So if everybody would be kind enough to follow David, that would be fantastic. Uh, so Holly agrees that she's going to do like I am. She's going to stay home. Um, yes. So, um, and, and I think that's, that's Dragon Slinger. I think you're extremely wise. Uh, you know, your, your best bet is just to hunker down. And I would say, especially with parents that you're caring for, that you need to focus on a whole bunch of hygiene products, like a, a uh, uh, what are they called? Oh, the 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 five gallon or the, the five gallon bucket with a pot, potty seat on it, and you know all kinds of wipes and toilet tissue, and you know, and then uh, chemical uh, wipes that you're going to use to give them bathing, uh, because you know showers and, and bathtubs may not be available toothpaste and things like that. So all these different hygiene products uh, that you're going to need to take care of them. A lot of plastic. Um, as people become more and more incapacitated, they're going to be more and more bedridden and they're going to stay on their beds. And so one of the things, if they soil the bed, you want to be able to put them back on that bed. And you do that by having plastic sheeting or plastic tarps to put them on and then have the, the uh, sheet on top of that so that, so that the, uh, uh, excrement doesn't get down into the mattress. You, they, nobody wants to sleep on that. So you're going to need that. I, I would focus if I were you, Dragon Slayer, if it were if I were in the same boat you are, I would be doing an awful lot on food and, and especially things that are easy to eat. Uh, you know, di number one, swallowing becomes harder as you get older. And of course, dementia also affects your trachea and your esophagus. And so that's going to have, you know, some swallowing issues. So you're going to have fairly soft things to eat. So I'd get a lot of stew blends and, and uh, things like that, soup blends, uh, a lot of good suits, nutritious soups. I would get some good nutritious drinks. Um, and then, uh, of course, um, hygiene products. And that would be where I would focus. That's just me. Um, Hunker down is ideal for you because you found it easier for you to start prepping with. Uh, okay. Yep. And let me see here. Hi, Nikki. Welcome. Mississippi. I, I drove um, my, my ex-brother-in-law uh, is from, from Biloxi. And so I spent a little bit of time there. Gosh, that's gorgeous down by the coast. I also did, uh, when I had my disaster response company, I also did, uh, uh, a little bit of work at past St. Christian, uh, which was totally devastated by hurricane Katrina. And, uh, even inter even US 80, the, the asphalt was washed out to sea and, and then portions of Interstate 10 were washed out to sea. The closest thing, there was, a, there was a Catholic church that they still had the foundation and the altar. That's all that was left of it. It passed St. Christian that was left after uh, <clears throat> Hurricane Katrina. But gosh, you could tell that that was a beautiful, gorgeous place before that. Um, Pat agrees she's not going to be bugging out. It, it emotionally draining, emotionally and mentally draining. I wholeheartedly agree with you. Um, okay. Um, let me read this. That to those who are alone, I understand that for why you take it didn't happen. My hubs refuses to see anything. I'm a 47 year old disabled mom of five that's trying to do what I can because there will be 12 of us. Wow. Um, yeah, and and uh, 
that's going to be, you know, piecing things together as you can. And so, you know, focusing on things that are multidimensional and multi-purpose, I think is going to be your key. Uh, you know, you can't buy one specific item. What you get has to be uh, able to be used in a multitude of different ways. Uh, Okay, so he's talking about the humanitarian disaster relief, which is basically uh, an international form of um, a, a uh, MRE. These, however, very seldom have any meat products in them. They, they are halal. They're also kosher. They're also vegetarian. And, you know, to, so that they could use them in India for, for the Hindus and the Buddhists. And, uh, you know, they're halal so that they can be for, for Muslim uh, believers. And then, uh, they also can be kosher, you know, so, I mean, so don't think you're going to get, if you're, if you're used to eating meats, you're going to be changed over to a vegetarian diet. But, uh, uh, so you got a case is probably going to be about 10 or 12 meals for $50. $50. So you're looking at somewhere between, um, well, let's figure eight to 12. So you're looking at somewhere between eight, maybe down to, uh, uh, $5 a meal. That's, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, yeah, it's funny how that happens because, you know, we had Snowmageddon here two or three years ago. And, you know, a couple of us, maybe three or four families out of 120 here in this neighborhood, uh, went out and got solar and water catchment and all the other things that we needed uh, because we didn't have the power for those four days, you know, the battery backup and everything else and generators. As a matter of fact, I gave my 5 kW generator and 10 gallons of gas to my daughter. Uh, thank you, Scott. I was looking for, that's the word I was looking for, luggable. We've got three of them. Uh, so, you know, one for solids and, and one for liquids and one for just to, as a spare. Remember, two is one, one is none. So therefore I need three. Um, but anyhow, the, the neighbors, a lot, most neighbors didn't learn. And when Snowmageddon 2 hit, I was ready. I ended up giving a lot of stuff away. And as a matter of fact, I gave away my Sterno stove. I didn't give it away. I loaned it, but I forget who I loaned it to, and that they never returned it. So I, today I went to um, Bass Pro Shop and bought a new Sterno stove so I can do a video on cooking uh, out back. 13 gallon trash bags is a great idea. Thank you. Uh, I would I would prefer the uh, contractor grade, you know, that makes sure that they're thick and capable. Uh, remember that if you have a luggable loo, you're going to have to probably put some sort of a trash bag inside of there. I would even double bag it to keep it in, in case it leaks. Uh, and then you're going to take one of those bags out and you're going to dispose of it. So, um, you know, if it's a liquid that you're collecting in one bag, then you can reuse that that bag, but I'm I'll tell you after three to five days, it's going to stink. Uh, if it's solids, then, you know, that's going to be a different thing. And, uh, so on my shopping list for, um, next time I go to Walmart, uh, I've got down that I need more cat litter and I need more rid, uh, is it Ridex? I believe, which is, uh, the stuff you put in septic tanks to, uh, to help with the, uh, decomposition and, um, morphing of, of, of the fecal matter so that uh, it doesn't have become a problem. <clears throat> you know, maybe, Pat, maybe, maybe what you might want to do is ask them to focus on coming to you and then you become the center. And then uh, that way, you know, everybody can store their stuff at your place and come to use it. Um, I've got a hand well. I just put in. I got a hand crank washer. Wow, Dragon Slayer! I, I'm coming to you. Okay, uh, I'll be at your place. It sounds like you got it well set up. Um, I do have. I found a hand crank uh, washing machine uh, rinser spinner. It was about sixty dollars on Amazon, and uh, but you know it does one or two pieces of clothing at a time. But you know what? It cleans them. So, and it's hand crank and it'll spin all the water out. Uh, we, we went out 
my daughter gave me a new uh, shelving unit, plastic. I don't want to use it in the house for the heavy cans and stuff like that. So I put it out in the garage and that's where we have all of our paper products. We got their toilet paper and our paper towels and, and uh, our boats that we're using for food trays. And um, uh, so when I was out there working on all that, I found some nice stuff that I thought I'd lost. So, you know, it's kind of great. Um, So now I can put my hand crank washer up in there. Uh, make sure you have plenty of soap. Make sure you, oh, I know where I was going. I, I, I found my two bags of uh, clothespins and my clothesline that, that we've got. So we're going to be prepared with that. Because remember, we aren't going to have dryers. Uh, well, I, I'm going to tell you a totally opposite story. My mother was bipolar. And... Uh, when she came down with dementia, she actually turned out to be the opposite. She became a very nice person. Uh, the problem is she didn't know who I was, but I would go over every Sunday and take her a half dozen uh, donuts and we'd sit and eat donuts and drink coffee. And I don't know if she knew anything I said, you know, she would smile and, and uh, she was kind of nice and pleasant, but I spent every Sunday with her. I'd spend about an hour with her and we'd just eat donuts and drink coffee. Uh, but at least she wasn't yelling at me. Um, yeah, that 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 devastated the whole area. But you know what? I love uh, small town South U.S. Um, just Appalachia in in, in Arkansas, Mississippi, uh, Lower Alabama, uh, the Panhandle of Florida. Just real honest to goodness people. You just treat them nice, treat them with respect, and they're going to do the exact same thing to you. And and that's just uh, you know something that's just fantastic. Okay, so I think David's saying twenty four hours each for twenty four hours for each one of the packets in the humanitarian rations. Uh, yeah. Okay. Saying that so each one is a twenty four hour uh, or three meals. Uh, little on prepper agrees, bug out only if you have to, um, snow in Tampa. Wow. Uh, so let me tell you my, my experience and, and can't chicken. I have no, can't chicken. Let me, let me hold my place here in the book where we are. Uh, canned chicken, I have, I think is great. Chili, all these other things. Uh, where I've had my greatest problems with food, canned food, and I'm not buying anymore. As a matter of fact, uh, we threw away, gosh, four shelves of, of canned fruit. So now this just came in. I'm, I'm getting all, of, I'm replacing all of my fruit with uh, freeze dried. And, uh, so pineapple and peaches is what just came in. And then, of course, my last order with uh, Thrive Life, I got the blueberries. That's Helen's favorite. We got blackberries and peaches and apples. I get my apples from the LDS uh, Provident Living Store, a lot cheaper than anywhere else. Um, and so, you know, we, we I'm getting all my fruits now. I, I've had pears, peaches, and... Mandarin oranges are the three things that I've had just blow up on me. And, and so that caused all kinds of problems in, in the pantry. So uh, I'm never, I'm not going to stock any more of those. And if I do, it's only going to be for one year. I'm not going to have the, the lengthy storage or, or you know, shelves of, of peaches, pears, and uh, mandarin oranges like I used to have. Every time I get them, they, they just blow up after about two or three years and, and doesn't do any good. So that's going to all be freeze dried. That's another one of those mistakes you learn. You know, the other mistake is, you know, don't don't scrimp on your shelving. Make sure you get good quality shelving. Even the thick plastic stuff that says it'll hold, you know, 500 pounds of shelf uh, from from Sam's Club, they don't. Uh, just beware, you know. So, um, so hello tofu says yes, double bagging is preferred. Um, Okay, yeah, you, I, I, if there was lime available around here, I, I, I don't know where you get yours, Dave, but welcome, by the way. 
Uh, good to see you and thank you for commenting. Uh, lime would be ideal because that's what's going to eat it the best. That's what's going to cause it to compost the best. So thank you for that. And that's that's why I'm getting the Ridex is because I don't know where to get lime. I guess I could get lime. I don't know. I don't know where I'd get it. I'd have to check into that. Um, so Dragon Slayer, it all depends on where you are. Here in Texas, uh, there are certain zip codes that the state and the federal government will pay to install a solar system in your home. It won't pay for the battery backup, but they will pay for the solar system. So the solar system, if you think of it, if you can get that part of it done for free by the government, then with the savings you have in your electric bill, save that up and then you can buy the battery and uh, the battery backup and that's going to set you up. So, you know, think think one step at a time. And if you can get the federal government or the, the state government uh, to pay for your panels and, and, you know, offset the cost of, of your actual cost of electricity, then use the savings to, to get the rest of it. I, I, that's, I, I did mine incrementally. I, I don't have as much money as a lot of people think I do. So I put in the, the 16 solar panels, waited a year, bought the battery, waited a year, added the other eight panels. So by the way, I added those other eight panels, and this is from ADT Solar. Uh, I signed the contract the day after Thanksgiving. They still are not connected. <laughs> I mean, th they passed the inspection by the city. They passed every inspection there is two weeks ago. And so I just sent another text message to my uh, person in charge of my account today and said, hey, two questions. When, am the, when are these things going to be turned on? And number two, uh, the original guy two years ago told me that I could only have 10 plugs hooked up to him. Then the guy who installed it said, that's bulls. And then the last guy who installed the panel says, where are your 10 plugs? And so what's the story? You know, is, is it limited to 10 plugs? Is it not limited to 10 plugs? Can I get a straight answer from somebody? And, and uh, I'm still waiting for that straight answer. So still don't have a system totally up and still don't have a straight answer. And we're what may. So uh, let me see, end of December, January, February, March, April. So we're now five and a half months into the project, and I still don't have eight panels hooked up to my house. Um, I will I will try to find it, Diana, too, and I'll try to put it in tomorrow. I, I will add it to the show notes sometime tomorrow. Come back tomorrow afternoon and just look in the uh, uh, more or about, and if I can find it, I will have it in the notes so that you can see it there. Uh, Let me see. Yeah, there are, there are. I'm glad my mother didn't think I was my father. I think she cared for me more than she did him. Uh, but anyhow. Yes, camphor does have to be rotated, but it also, even if you're rotating, if it's so like if your rotation is a three-year rotation, be very, very cautious because, you know, there, if you don't keep, religiously uh, bringing that fruit forward and everything, uh, you know, then it can, it can. Uh, I prefer steel, but uh, I, three quarter inch plywood, uh, that's what I, I have three quarter inch plywood on top of my uh, half inch press board. So I, I actually have thickened mine up quite a bit. And that's, and then I've got some steel slats that I put underneath that from side to side. Um, let me see where we are. Looks like good. Need to Google solar systems. Yes, please do, Nikki. That that would be fantastic. Um, I have the 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 original. Uh, solar system that I bought was the Jackery 1500, I believe it is, or Jackery 2000, a uh, little orange system. And uh, gosh, I paid almost, I want to say almost $1,500 for it when it first came out several years ago. I noticed that now they're selling them at, at uh, uh, what's that? Uh, Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight now has Jackery systems. 
So let me see. Yes, yes. Keep playing spare parts. We've had um, some horrific uh, hailstorms here. I'm, I'm just waiting for it to go through one of my, my solar panels here in the near future. Wow, Dragon Slayer, unbelievable. Yes, yes. So that is, I keep hitting my mic and knocking it off every time I move my hands. Okay, there we go. Um, so, yeah, just the old plunger in, in a bucket, yeah, that for soap, and then you can do the same thing to kind of uh, uh, rinse it out as well. Uh, so Dragon Slayer, Dragon Slayer lives in an area that only allows tracks write-offs. Uh, okay, that's understandable. I can I can understand that. Oh wow! Well. Um, No, I have not heard of any of them exploding, um, and and everything that that I've heard of now, where where a lot of people don't, we 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 do a very poor job, and I, and I mean we as a society we don't RTFI, which is read the flipping instructions, and so one of the things that that when you get a solar system like a Jackery. One of the things it tells you is do not keep that battery charged for more than six months. So if you charge the battery, then at about six months, you've got to discharge the battery. That means you've got to use up all the electricity that's in it and then recharge it with new. And that cycling is what keeps it alive. If you don't cycle it, uh, then, you know, that can cause you some problems as far as uh, the degradation of the battery itself. Okay, so let's get back to the contents of a, of a bug out bag. We talked about the pump water filter, self-defense. Um, so self-defense, most people think of a firearm. You can also, uh, I'm taking a class on uh, using this as a tool, as a, as a weapon, uh, a fighting weapon. So American cane self-defense. And uh, uh, it's about $300 for the entire course. Matt Pescarini, uh, I believe, uh, offers classes for free on YouTube. And so you get yourself a cane and you can get probably get them at, at uh, uh, Goodwill. Now, there is a problem. I'll show you the difference between a combat cane and a medical cane. Let me get my – now I have to take my thing off. Okay, so the difference between a medical cane and a combat cane is the crook, okay? So if you notice, there's no way I can spin this because I can't even get my hand all the way in. The, the, the crook is so narrow and, and the horn comes down. So this is a regular medical cane. Now for a combat cane, the crook and horn are a lot larger. Notice how I can get my hand in there and I can freely get that in there so that I can spin this and you know get good good grip on it and everything else and then the other difference is this has a very small piece of rubber on the end whereas the medical cane has a larger piece of rubber on the end so this is what i was using this is what i used to walk and this is what i use for for combat cane training uh but uh i will probably start i'll probably get a, a regular a larger uh, combat cane with a palm rest. And, and then that's probably be my primary walking cane here in the near future. So think of things like that. If you're interested, you can also get walking sticks, you know, learn how to use a walking stick as a weapon. That's good. That may be, if you need a walking stick as you're walking, that may become your primary weapon. Think about things that are going to have, you're already going to have in your hand. So you don't have to dig or reach for something. What is it that you're going to have immediately available that you can use to defend yourself? And that's what I would study uh, and make sure that I was very, very proficient in. Um, let me see here. Hello, Rainy Horvath. Horvath. 
Oh, that's an interesting last name. I'm going to guess Scandinavian. Um, okay. Uh, well, and, and so, as a matter of fact, the, the, the course that I, I purchased, uh, it was like $350, but that included the combat cane. And uh, it's eight, no, it's 12 classes, one hour classes online. And we do it with Zoom video so that he can correct us. Then we have to practice, make a video, send it into him. He comments on the Zoom video. And sometimes like Form 1, I, I, had to, I had to redo Form 1 twice before he was happy with it. But, you know, it's just making sure your feet are in the right position and everything else. And so, you know, you get good quality instruction. I wish it was face-to-face, -face, but, you know, I'm very happy with the cost. I'm very happy with the fact that I am getting good tutoring. Um, it's almost one-on-one, -on -one, but not really, you know, so uh, I'm, I'm very happy. Hungarian, wow. Well, welcome, welcome. I am I am a, a student of European history. So, and I spent 21 years as a Russian translator. Well, not 21 years, 17 years as a Russian translator, four years as an Indonesian translator. And uh, so, uh, so all of all of that, I'm I'm always intrigued uh, by all things European. Uh, Okay, so back to our list. So we've got the self-defense. Seasonal clothing. Make sure you have extra. I have military 21 years in the Army. I have a passion. Clean underwear, clean socks. So I have uh, an extra set of clean underwear, under shorts and under and T-shirt, and four pairs of clean socks in my bug out bag. That's how I am about that. I have uh, military gloves. So it has a wool insert into a leather shell. Um, and, and I have to, I, I love that now, especially now that I'm allergic to leather. Uh, but I also have two extra sets of inserts, the wool inserts into the gloves so that if they get dirty, I can get those washed and cleaned and everything else in the winter, as much wool as you can get is going to be fantastic. Um, that's going to be your best, uh, uh, defense against wet and cold. Uh, make sure you have good rain gear. I like rain suits. Um, now, a lot of other people prefer ponchos, but I, I just like a rain suit. I don't know why, but the rain suit with a poncho, the rain finds it way, its way inside my boots, and I don't like that. Uh, so I always get my, you know, from about the knees down or just soaking wet when I wear a poncho. And uh, so I prefer to have a rain suit. And so I, I bought the military camouflage rain suit when I was on active duty, and I could wear that when I was out in the field. And uh, now that I've become a fisher person, uh, you know, when we go out, best fishing is sometimes on rainy days out on a boat, out in the lake. So I got some Gore-Tex uh, rain gear uh, and I got it in a kind of a dull gray so that it, it kind of, uh, it's not like the woodland pattern uh, rain gear that I have from the military, but it is a lot lighter and a lot nicer and it's not quite as hot and stinky on the inside. Sunscreen, make sure you have plenty of bug spray. I would have both of those, uh, whether you're hunkering down or bugging out, make sure you have plenty, both of those. And get the camp grade, you know, the camping grade for both of those. Uh, maps, if you're traveling by by foot or else no, really know the area. Compass, I showed you all uh, a prepper hall here about a month ago. I finally replaced my Boy Scout compass. I've had that Boy Scout compass probably since about 19, gosh, I, when did I, I think he joined the Boy Scouts uh, at age 11. So that would have had to been about 1963, 64. And I've had that same compass ever since. Um, radios. So two things I want you to think about. Number one, and, and oh gosh, that's such a great thing. If you're getting ready for the fiction book club in here, this one. Uh, so we're going to be discussing this book the last Thursday of the month. In here, and, and this is the second time I read the book, and I didn't read it, and I didn't didn't really catch me, knock me like like it did now. But he talks about Amron, A M R R O N, 
uh, net, and that's the American uh, Radio Relay Organization, and they've set up a prepper net. So you can go to amron.net, and they have all the frequencies and codes and everything else they're going to be using for uh, uh, HF, shortwave, ham in an international emergency. It also uh, has a whole bunch of codes and everything else and maps. And then you can join, and I joined them, and you can find out whether there are other people, ham preppers in your area. So it's just a fantastic organization. So receiver only, as well as transmit and receive. Now, remember that if you buy a Baofeng uh, UV5R or if you buy a Yesu YE6, that those are dependent upon repeaters. And so if there is a grid down situation and there's no electricity to those repeaters, then what you have is you have a line of sight walkie talking. They aren't really hams. Okay. Um, so heavy duty waterproof socks. That's fantastic. I'll have to check those out. Um, I keep my go bags in the garage. Uh, I used to keep my get home bag which was a, a, actually, I called it my get home bag, but it's actually my go bag. I used to keep it in my pickup or in my car, in, in the trunk of my car. And I had a brand new Kia Sportage and somebody stole it out of the back of my car, which brings, and this was in 2015. So that, that's why I say that that other bag, I worked on it from 1980 to 2015 because it got stolen in 2015. I bought the Echo Sigma back and I, bag and I've been modifying it for the last eight years. So uh, if, if I can give you one piece of advice right now, the most significant piece of advice that I can give you is make sure you have a detailed inventory of everything that's in your bug out bag. Uh, because if it gets stolen, you want to have a complete inventory with original cost so you can get everything recouped. I probably lost at least $1,000 on my bug out bag. Gosh, we aren't getting very far past chapter one, are we? I may have to reinstitute everything. Uh, let me see. I did a video, uh, oh gosh, a year ago on what's next to my bed. So I have a fire extinguisher I keep next to my bed. Uh, that way, if there's a fire in the house, I can, you know, use it to get out of the house. And, and uh, I have my my uh, miniature, what you might call an altar. Um, you know, I, I have a, a replica of the Ark of the Covenant. And then uh, St. Michael watches over me. I have a St. Michael figurine and a couple other things. I have two flashlights. I have a candle. Uh, I've got all kinds of things right there around the. Uh, um, around my bed so that things I can use to get out of the house in case of emergency, <clears throat> not directly next to my bed, but very close and, and up high enough to where. My grandchildren don't even know it exists. I keep my self-defense item. But I also have my cane next to the bed, so uh, now I'm learning how to use that as a tool. It's not a bad idea at all. Um, same thing with the inventory dates. And, and as you see, there are two thoughts on inventory dates. Uh, one is people like to write the expiration date of items that they have on their canned goods and things like that. Or... I am of the other persuasion. I just put it by the acquisition date. And then I always know that the oldest one is the one I want to have furthest forward. Uh, so, you know, there's two different ways. There's two different philosophies about that. Whichever one works best for you, but just keep, be consistent in whatever it is that you do. Uh, good flashlight. Um, so I have a couple that I really, really like that I keep always close to me. This is the um, Olight uh, Arkfeld. Uh, this is about $100, but it's got uh, it's got a 1,000 lumen flashlight. And uh, so I'm not going to point it at the screen. I'm just going to kind of point it away. It's also got a green laser. And I don't want to point that at the screen either. It's pointing over here. It's pointed. But I can use that uh, next to my rifle or pistol or whatever and, uh, you know, use that either way. Um, I have this little Nebo inspector, and it's uh, only 800 lumens, but it has this neat little clip on top so that what I can do is, let me turn it off so I don't blind you. It's got 800 and 600 and 400 amps or, or lumens, but with this little clip on it, 
I can put it on the brim of my cap and wear it as a uh, hat light. Um, then this is the, uh, I don't know what this was called, uh, but this one also has a laser. It's only 600 lumens. Um, and then I have, this one is also a Nebo. It's the Nebo slide. And uh, so what I like about it is you can either use it as a standard flashlight or you can lift this part up and it becomes an area light. So um, those are all right here close by me. Uh, I'm no longer, I am switching over to Olight from Nebo because this is my favorite. And if you notice all of my flashlights, I try to get them as USB rechargeable. I have a little Goal Zero recharger, solar battery charger. And so I can re refill all of my flashlights as well as my electric lighters uh, with that uh, uh, Goal Zero portable uh, solar system. But this one, I bought it and the on off switch doesn't work. So every time I push it, all it does is come on for a second and it goes off. So, and I can't get it turned in and get a replacement for it. So Nebo lost my business because they won't make good on the, on a brand new flashlight that uh, I would like to get chased out So or changed out. So uh, let me see here. Uh, so other things, what are you going to need in your house? At least one to three gallons of fresh water per person per day. Also think if it lasts longer than however long you've got your water stored for, how are you going to resupply your water? You're going to need at least, uh, they say 1,200 calories minimum for women, 1,500 for men, 2,000 if you're doing heavy manual labor per person per day. Uh, so think on planning your meals as far as uh, calories. Make sure you have all your backup medicine, over-the-counter medications, as well as your prescription medications. We just got permission uh, today on, on uh, our insulin supply to get 90 days at a time instead of 30 days. So now we're going to have a 90-day supply here at the house all the time. So I'm very, very happy with that. Um, so don't forget security, detect, defend, and deter. And uh, so how can you keep people from thinking that your place is a good target in the first place? Think of energy. Um, let me see. Emergency preparedness basics really quickly. Your emergency response plan, uh, your bug out kit, first aid kits, fire extinguishers, what kind of things you're going to have. Uh, I will, uh, if you get the book, the one thing that I really, really love about um, this book is at the end, at the very end of this book, he has a QR code. So when you go to the QR code, it basically helps you write your family's emergency response plan. So it's got the basic outline. All you have to do is fill in some of the specifics and uh, then you've got a fantastic outline. So that's kind of about it. Let me see where we are and then we can kind of close this one down this evening. Uh, I am all for lithium rechargeable batteries. I, I, I think it's one of the best, best things there are. David, now, now David Lynn Prepper, principal, uh, has just recently purchased a fantastic battery bank. Uh, and so, you know, he, he got it at very inexpensively. I think he got it at Walmart where he can tote a whole bunch of D's, C's, double A's, triple A's, nine volt batteries and everything else inside. And they don't come in contact with each other. They're protected so they don't wear out, uh, which is great. I would do that. I would, I would love to have rechargeable batteries of that type, a recharger and then a gold zero charging system. And that would be fantastic. Uh, let me see if I can't find the recharging system. Uh, I'll also put a link into uh, David's video about his uh, tote uh, with the uh, uh, battery buddy, I think is what it was called. I'll, I'll put a link into that. Hand Creek is fantastic. I have the Kato Emergency Radio. And uh, so the Kato Emergency, K-A-I-T-O, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, I, I, I only have one Asian language, and that's Indonesian, which is very, it's pronounced, ex there are no exceptions. It's always pronounced exactly as it's spelled. 
A is always ah, E is always eh, I is always E, O is always O, and U is always U. So no exceptions. It just simplest language on the on the on the face of the earth. Love it. <clears throat> but anyhow, I hope it's keto. And but it has hand crank, solar, and battery. So it's got three different forms of power. So I, it's thirty or forty dollars. Fantastic little emergency. It also has a flashlight on it, so you have a hand crank flashlight. Um, so I, I have all wool socks. So, um, and I was telling Helen, we probably need to go to, um, for, as far as my prepping and, and my, my bug out bag, uh, and what I'll wear after SHTF. But, uh, I wear anklets, anklet socks. I don't like having the high top stuff. Uh, because my right leg is, is always so swollen uh, that if I wear the high socks, then it, then it constricts, you know. So the only time I wear high socks is when I wear, um, you know, those, those uh, pressure socks and uh, trying to get my legs sized down. And uh, then, uh, so I'll wear cotton then, but the rest of the time I prefer to wear wool. Uh, what are those called? Anyhow, pressure socks, you know. Uh, Nikki, let me, so let me, let me tell you something. There is, uh, go to PrepperNet, I think it's PrepperNet.net, and uh, join them. That will give you a list of people out there who want to be identified in your immediate area. Uh, and then if you are Catholic, there is CORAC, C-O-R-A-C, and so that is, CORAC is a group of Catholic preppers. And uh, so, you know, where there are three of us here in my county that we, we kind of get together. Uh, and I'm trying to convince the parish that we need to have uh, basically the capability to do a soup line, uh, especially with the way the economy is going and everything else. We may have to provide soup kitchen uh, meals to a whole bunch of people. Um, but, uh, you know, so, so CORAC, you have peppernet.net. Um, Travis on, what is Travis's, um, but the prepared homestead. Uh, so there's, look up there, there is another, uh, URL. This is a website and it's the prepared homestead.com. I believe it might be.net, but Travis has put out a deal where he's also got a whole bunch of people. You put your name in, you can find other preppers in your area. Do me a favor, however, be extremely cautious in how much information you give them. Tell them no matter what, anytime you join a group, they're going to say, what do you have to offer us? You're going to say, just me, because I'm here to learn. I'm, I'm here to find out what I need to do. You teach me. And then if you have a skill, you can teach them. But the minute that you know, you're in with the wrong group and they find out you have stuff, that's when you're going to be in trouble. You want to be uh, Miss Don't Know Anything, Miss Don't Have Anything, until you've actually tested them out and know that they are a good, reliable, trustworthy group. And that's going to be where you want to go. Um, okay, let me see here. So Little on Prepper did the same with her underwear and socks. Uh, yeah, I think, I think your battery suitcase, that's, that's basically what this, this battery buddy is that, that prepper David Lynn has. Um, and I, and I think he got it at Walmart. Um, he may have gotten it on Amazon, but I think he got it at Walmart. Um, okay. Okay. So that's basically it. Um, so what I would like to do is I would like to remind you all tomorrow night, and, and this is going to be very delicate because we have to kind of avoid certain saying certain things uh, because we don't want to be shut down by YouTube. So it's going to have to keep, keep it very civil and avoid certain words. Uh, but we are going to be talking tomorrow night about what do we do uh, with people who violate the law in a post-apocalyptic, post-SHTF, post-WROL world. How do we as a society maintain law and order when there really aren't that many corrective devices available to us? So what are some 
things that we might consider to be uh, corrective devices that are going to correct the situation and not necessarily alienate a person to where they become an enemy, if, if that makes sense. So that's kind of what we're going to be talking about tomorrow night from 8 to 9. Uh, so that's going to be based off of the two series that we've been talking about. Uh, of course, we did all six books of the Stonemont series. That's been a, pre uh, a prevalent discussion there. We are now we're finishing up. We just, just finished up last week. Uh, book six of the Survivalist series by A. American. That's become a very prevalent uh, topic in his as well. It's going to be another, we're going to talk about it again in book seven, uh, even more because it's going to be against groups of people rather than against individuals here. So uh, that's going to be, you know, just a, a constant discussion that we're going to have uh, about, uh, you know, what are we going to do in all of these situations? So with that, uh, Numbers chapter 6. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. You know, I found a fantastic one in Proverbs today, too. I wrote it down. Let me read that to you real quick. Proverbs 29, 18. This was in my studies this morning, and I just said, wow, that's phenomenal. I got to share that. Uh, let me see. Proverbs should be all these tabs right here. <laughs> Gosh, I got so many tabs in my Bible. 29. Okay, so we're going to do Proverbs 29, 17, and then we'll go to number six. Oh, I've got it tabbed. Why didn't I know that? Should have known that. Okay, it says, uh, without a vision, the people lose restraint but happy is the one who follows good instruction. So that means we need to provide a vision and a mission for all those people around us who want to survive with us. So that's that togetherness key that we're going to talk about here in just a minute. So number six, verses 24, 25, and 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So remember, we're all in this together so we can come out the other side together. Please, 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 please be kind, polite, and respectful to each other because we're all we have. Uh, we've got to make it through this together. So remember that togetherness is the key. Take care, everybody. So glad you're here, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Take care. Bye-bye.